and uh, yeah, obviously Ikram is is a, is a savage. Uh, Trevor Peak has as uh, you know, he's probably got a fractured jaw, but we were talking about how much punishment this guy took and literally didn't look phased at all or, or you know, no bruises, no swelling, no nothing on his face. Um, yeah, the, I, I think some, some really good talent came out of tonight. With Marcos, it's interesting, right? Because as you said, he looked really, really good until he got tired. Mm -hmm. But you obviously saw the talent in there. I swear to God, I said to Sean, Let's see. He, he looks unbelievable. Let's see how he looks halfway through the second round and then the third round. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, you can't not fight for three years and think you're going to come in and keep a pace like that. And, and Lewis, you know, he had to defend all those shots and, you know, the, the punches, the flying knees and uh, the leg kicks and, the, you know, all the shit that that guy put on a clinic. But by halfway through the second round, we'll see how his cardio looks. And, and sure enough, um, but, but, but he, he looked phenomenal. And obviously representing Peru as well, it just kind of made me think, kind of wondering where South America stands. I know you're just getting back to Brazil, but, you know, you had kind of started expanding the market in South America a little bit. Have you started to think about the other countries in South America again, or is it still too early? Um, yeah, no. I, I mean, what do you mean? What's the... Into getting events. You know, we're just starting yeah. to travel again and get in the world. Is it just Brazil on the radar right now, or is it like, hey, maybe we can start Yeah, no. Brazil, Brazil is, you know, we got to get back to Brazil, and then, you know, eventually we're going to get to every country everywhere but yeah we're not we're not pinpointing any south american countries right now i did want to ask you about trevor p and, and it's all about the talent i mean yeah. when you think about a, a market like well, well australia is kind of an unfair market because they they have really good pay-per-view business there and everything else but um when you look at the, the the amount of talent we had there when we first went there compared to now so what we need is you know guys like like daniel marcos you know to 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 blow up and, and do big things and really ignite that, that part of the, uh, of the world. I wanted to ask you about Trevor Peak as far as him being transported, first of all. Uh, was that just you being cautious because of the battle, or did the doctors make that? No, game? I mean, he, he needed to be. They, they must have got back there and noticed there was something wrong with his jaw, but regardless, he should have been transported anyway after the type of war he was in. And I guess how does that go into factoring into your decision, right? Because he took a lot of damage. On the one hand, we say, man, that kid's got heart, he's got a chin, but he also got you know, touched up quite a bit. Yeah. So how do you how do you evaluate that? Well, that, that that's part of the deal. I mean, he overcame. He was getting his ass whooped. Overcame it and came back and and won. Part of uh, being it's not just talent, how hard you hit, but how good your chin is, how much heart you have, and and the amount of punishment you can take factors into how well you do in, in the fight business too. Last one to ask you about was Fareed. Obviously, he was a little bit disappointed that he didn't get a finish. Um, Decision, but still looked impressive. His brother's here, I guess. Hey, again, you have to look at who he fought. He fought a very durable, tough guy who came here to win, fights out of a great camp, and, you know, it's all part of the deal. Nice. Not everybody's going to get a finish. Nice. Uh, last couple of things I want to ask. Uh, it's been a few days since a, a crazy week last week at USC 279. Obviously, I watched the coverage. You had nothing but nice things to say about Nate Diaz on his way out the door. What do you do from here? Do you ever contact him and see what his plans are? Do you just sit around and wait and see what he decides? Do you, do you talk to him at all? Yeah. I mean, leading up to, to um, this fight, you know, long before the, the fight was made, he came into the office and we talked. And I said, listen, man, we love you. Whatever you want to do. You've been here forever. You put on great fights for us. You know, it's been fun. Whatever you want to do. I, I mean, the kid's 38 now. You know, it's whatever he wants to do now in the twilight of his career. Uh, I, I wish him nothing but the best. But like, if he's still a free agent, hasn't done anything, would you ever think like, oh, we got this idea. Let's reach out to Nate and see if he's down. Or do you like wait for him to come to you and say, I'd, I'd like to come back? Well, he, he, he let us know what he wants to do. He, he doesn't want to resign and he wants to get out there and do whatever it is he wants to do. You know, I've heard rumblings of uh, starting his own promotion and doing stuff like that. So, um, you know, the, the, we're not talking about a 27-year-old guy here that's, you know, whatever. Nate, Nate's seen it all, done it all. Nate's made a lot of money. He's done very well for himself, and, um, you know, I've always had a good relationship with the kid. You know, they, uh, like I said, they're always very interesting to deal with and, and, and whatever, but, uh, but I like Nate, so I'm happy for him, and whatever is next for him, good for him.
and after every, all the dust has settled, was it a good week for Hamzat Shemaev or a bad week for Hamzat Shemaev, right? I mean, he's involved in an altercation, he misses weight, then he comes in and looks incredible. Like, how do you think of Hamzat after last week? It was a nutty week. I mean, the whole week was nutty in every way that it could possibly be nutty. But I, I wouldn't say by any stretch that it was a bad week for Hamzat Shemaev. I mean, he came in, and, and, and I, I mean, you, you all know, um, what I think about Kevin Holland and what I, you know, what I think of him as a person and as a fighter. And goddamn, Hamzat made that look easy and very quick. So uh, he's an absolute beast. Nice. Last thing I want to ask you about, I know you don't want to talk about Jake Paul, but I did want to ask you about Anderson Silva. They are fighting. They faced off twice this week. Here's 47-year-old Anderson Silva facing a man 22 years as junior. I'm just curious kind of what you think about him doing this. Or do you admire it? Are you concerned for him? Do, do you cheer for him in, in the bag? I mean, how do, what, what do you think with Anderson? That's a unique way to throw it at me now. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the next question? <laughs> when will we see Anderson go in the Hall of Fame? Can you expect that? Do we think we can get that soon? He's like the uh, I, Yeah, soon I would assume, yeah. Okay. You mentioned about the fact that COVID kind of put a halt on the talent coming through. Was it good that you still had the Contender Series to at least keep some talent coming through? Was it, ask me that again. You, were, you still put on the Contender Series during COVID. Was it good that you were able to do that? Because even though regional shows weren't going, you were still able to at least produce yeah. some talent. Everything through COVID was difficult. Um, this, yeah, so yes. Uh, Ikram tonight, it looked like he could be one of those guys who could be put in against some top tier talent already. Do you think he's one guy that can be sort of shoved in against the top 15, maybe top 20? Yes. We, we were talking about that in the back before we went out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't do that to him. I mean, the, one of the things that, that, that I was saying to Laura that I love about this show is I love putting um, this young talent that you think has potential in positions where you know, there, there's tons of pressure that they have to deal with and, you know, whatever it is they go through before they come out and, and perform on a Tuesday night, it, it just helps them get ready for when they, when they get in the big show and, and their first UFC fight. But he's still got to get through that. You know what I mean? How much of this is mental? I mean, obviously, you know, they need to win the fight, but for this particular show, for this pressure, how much of this is a mental thing? 100%. It's 100% mental because we already know they're all talented. I mean, you got kids coming in here that are 12, 13, and 0. Uh, you know they're talented. Th this is where you find out where they are mentally. Do you think guys who can win this show sort of almost have an advantage going into the UFC? Because this is, this is it, nothing like the Yeah, room. I look at it like the ultimate fighter. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the, the, the talent that comes into the ultimate fighter from day one of the show, and then you see them in the finale, they're two totally different people. Last one for me. Alex Volkanovsky says he wants to be back up for the Abu Dhabi main event between Charles Oliveira and Islam Makhachev. You any interest in that? Sure. Go. Cool. Hey, Dana. Hey. Um, do you have a favorite Nate Diaz memory? A favorite Nate Diaz memory? Um, off the top of my head, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know. But listen, there's been lots of great memories with Nate, and uh, you know, I, I I I like Nate. I mean, he's he's one of the most lovable characters in the history of the of the company. Uh, the MMA world, even though he tries not to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the MMA world lost Elias Theodoro this, uh, this, this week. I just wanted your thoughts on him. You know, he was a tough winner. Yeah. Nicest guy. Like, what you're so crazy and, and out of nowhere because he didn't tell anybody what he was going through. And uh, for, for a guy that young, that healthy, um, it's just, it's, it's horrible, man. It's, 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 it's sad. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. And then um, it was reported that Sean Strickland versus Jared Cannonier is booked for the last card of the year, December 17th. Can you confirm that or not? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Thank you. Yep. How excited are you for Joe Pfeiffer to make his uh, proper yeah. debut this week? I'm excited. Uh, there's a show that we do. I think it's called Beyond the Contender Series and uh, goes up on YouTube. It's, a, it's, it's on him this week, and uh, I just watched it yesterday. It's really good. Nice. And the last thing, it kind of brought up when you were talking about COVID and the things you weren't able to do. Um, 
any new show ideas on the horizon? Things that you guys maybe thought about now that the world's opened back up, you know, getting back out there, any new other show items? No, um, we're gonna, I think we're, lo we're looking to shoot, uh, looking for a fight in December. And uh, yeah, but that's it. I, I mean, w believe me, I, I got enough shit to do right now. Uh, coming up with another show, um, you know, look at look at how how scarce the uh, looking for a fights have been, you know. So to 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 take off to a place for three days and and, and film, you know, any other show right now would be tough. I I, I need to start. To, I mean, as soon as we post looking for a fight, it does a million views in 24 hours. So. I mean, that show alone, you know, three, four million people see the kid we signed before he ever fights in the UFC. Awesome. Dana, thank you for another great night. Thank you, brother. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Alex, how about, was there ever a Nate Diaz fight that we didn't hear about that was going to happen? You guys were trying to work on it. We just never got to see. That could have been fireworks. A potential Nate Diaz fight that we didn't hear about that you guys were working on, you could never get it through. We oh, shit, I have no idea. That, 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 I don't know. Okay, and then as far as the UFC 279, once the dust settled, uh, was there anything else that went down? Because the thing was just absolute madness and how you guys were able to just put it together. Yeah, um, a lot of stuff went down. A lot of stuff that you didn't see and that people will never hear about. <laughs> All right, excellent. And then lastly on that topic, um, this was something kind of like when the, the Paulo Costa fight with Marvin, Costa misses weight horribly, then that big old fine. The, other than fines for, for Kamsad and being taken off that main event, is there any way to prevent this from ever happening again? Well, I, I mean, if you look, you know, the history of the company and, and this stuff that used to happen in, uh, back in the old days, we, we fixed a lot of the problems that we used to have. And Hamzat came in on weight. I mean, when he landed here, he was lighter than he was his last fight, and he made weight. So um, I, I heard this thing today, and again, I don't know how true it is or whatever, that like Pat Militich was saying uh, – that this thing was, we told Hamzat not to make weight because we weren't selling tickets and we weren't. The fucking show was sold out going into that day of the weigh-ins. I don't know if Pat really said that, but if he did, he has to be the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. I mean, you know how fucking stupid you have to be to even think something like that, let alone say it publicly and act like you're fucking serious. Um, we're regulated by the Athletic Commission. And if you think that we told Hamzat Chemaev to not make weight, then Hamzat shows up and the fans are all pissed off at him and stuff, and he's going to just, I mean, and knowing, if you know anything about the sport, this is a guy that was actually in the sport, training and fighting and everything else. If Pat really said that, it's fucking, holy shit. We might have to send him out to the fucking uh, clinic here, the brain clinic, get him fucking checked out. And then lastly for me, uh, Brazil, January, potentially can we see the big, the, I know you guys are going to go in strong. Maybe Amanda Nunes is on that card and the Moreno Figueiredo Quadril, uh, Chapter 4. Yeah. Yes and yes. Sounds great. Thank you, sir. All right, buddy. Done with me? I believe that was Brendan Schaub who said that. It was what? Brendan Schaub who, who, who made up that conspiracy. Oh, it wasn't Pat Militich? I think so. Well, I, I apologize to Pat Militich then. That makes sense. <laughs> Bye.